Radio-controlled model jets first flew onto the radar in the 1970s and have since evolved into sophisticated flying machines. Many have turbine engines and use real jet fuel. They allow people who would otherwise never pilot a jet to experience the thrill of flight with both feet on the ground. Radio-controlled model jets can roll and dive like a real jet. And they can reach speeds of almost 300 miles an hour. Operating one isn't child's play. It takes practice and skill to pilot this kind of model aircraft. It also takes money. Their prices run into thousands. Making a model jet begins with the paint job. They airbrush designs directly into the moulds that will be used to shape the various parts. This particular mould will be used to make one half of a wing shell. When the paint dries, they roll epoxy resin into the mould. Then put down a layer of fibreglass. They reinforce the fiberglass with super strong carbon fiber, then brush on more epoxy resin. The next layer is balsa, a lightweight wood from South America. They apply carbon fiber to sections of the wing, where parts are to be attached. Another sheet of fiberglass and epoxy is the final layer. Now they add a layer of absorbent material then sandwich the mould in plastic film. They install a connector for a vacuum hose and hook it up. The vacuum pulls out the air, squeezing the layers together. Then they bake the unit, which activates the epoxy, fusing the materials together. Next, they assemble the wooden framework for the wings. They reinforce it with strips of carbon fibre and apply epoxy on the edges. The model makers carefully install the framework on the wing shell. They apply an extra rib along the wing tip and slide aluminium cylinders into tubes in the framework. Then bead more epoxy along the wing shell's perimeter. They use high-strength adhesive in strategic parts of the framework to attach the other half of the moulded wing. They bolt the moulds together and set the assembly aside to allow the epoxy to cure. After a few hours, they extract the wing. Its artwork nicely transferred from the inside surface of the mould. Machinery then cuts holes in the wing for installing landing gear and motors called servos. This router drill is computer programmed to make accurate cuts without damaging the internal framework. This is critical because just a centimetre or two off and the router would destroy the carefully crafted wing. The modeler now perforates the fibreglass layer of the wing. He's creating a hinge section called an aileron. It's a control surface which makes the plane turn or roll. The ailerons and other control surfaces will be powered by servo motors. The front fuselage shell has been moulded and is now ready to be revealed. Like the wings, the body of this model jet needs a supporting framework, along with brackets for attachments. Another computerized router carves them out of multi-layered carbon fiber board. The modeler glues these parts inside the fuselage and the tail of the jet. These bulkheads provide the structural support needed for aerial maneuvers and ensure the integrity of the fuselage.
coming up. This model jet gets its wings and prepares. Controlling one of these aircraft is challenging and requires concentration. These are expensive toys and the learning curve is steep. Earlier we saw how the airframe was made for these junior jets. Now it's time to put those parts together and see if our model's got legs, as well as wings. Back at the factory, the moulded pieces of this model jet are coming together. They attach the wings to the fuselage, using the cylinders installed earlier. Then the modeler moves to the aircraft's tail and attaches the stabilizers, the rudder and the vertical fin. Super strength glue cements the assembly. Next, they build the motor. This one is a ducted fan electric system a type used in smaller jets. The modeler first assembles the casing that will hold the fan and its motor. He slides airfoils into the casing to create four ducts which will channel the flow of air. He slides the electric motor into the aluminium hub. Then anchors the assembly with a screw from the other side. The next part is a speed control mechanism. He solders its wires to those protruding from the motor. He encloses the mechanism in a vented tube, then sets the assembly aside temporarily. Now focus turns to the fan, which he hooks up to a testing device. As the fan spins, the machine analyzes it for vibrations that would indicate that the blades are out of balance. The gauge shows it's vibrating slightly, so he makes adjustments and then it's ready to install. He attaches the fan to the motor shaft and secures it with a bolt in the center. It's now time to power up this motor at the test station. He brings it up to full throttle and measures the thrust it generates. It passes the test, so he installs it in the fuselage. Later, this ducted fan motor will be connected to a battery pack. Now he moves onto the landing gear and attaches air cylinders to the front and rear wheels. Pumping air into these cylinders will cause the wheels to retract after takeoff. This system will also cause the wheels to engage for landing. Next, a sheet of clear thermoplastic is transformed into cockpit canopy parts. A machine heats the plastic, then vacuum shrinks it into two moulds. The plastic hardens in seconds to create two clear plastic bubbles for the jet canopy. They mould the cockpit shell in two sections using the same technique. The cockpit now installed and an action figure for a pilot, this 50s era Korean warjet replica is in fighting form. All that's left is for the owner to install the radio control system. From nose to tail, the attention to detail is impressive. Some of these model jets even have gas turbine engines for added authenticity. With radio controls installed, this turbine model jet is ready to taxi down the runway. The operator does one last check of the control surfaces. Then, it's time for takeoff. Miniature turbine engines sound and work like those of a big jet. These rumble and soar and can perform aerobatic stunts. Of course, it all hinges on both the skill of the operator and a job well done at the factory. So this looks like another successful landing. Mission accomplished.
over and out.